Hi again, in this video we're going to talk about the expander input output unit. Now this will have the same functionality as any wired input output unit. So it's used for shutting down plant, um, opening or closing fire doors, um, shutting down gas pipes, shutting machinery down, all sorts of stuff like that. So inside you've got um, your battery packs at the top there, so six AA alkaline batteries. Yeah, I've got a temper spring on here, so it, um, it will come up with the temper uh, once it's added on. Um, you can see your uh, relay here. It's going to switch 24 volts at 1 amp. Um, you've also got your end line in the input side, so this is um, a 20k end line resistor and um, you've got your address mechanism on the side here so um, so I think this one's set up for address 8 I look a bit so uh, yep so um, yeah so we can add this onto the system so we'll go through the same process as before and um, just to mention that um, these plastic boxes uh, the newest type of interface um, if you've got the older interface the metal interface with the aerial on the top of the unit um, you possibly won't be able to add IO units and also you might not be able to add the sound of, combined sounder beacon detector as well so just to uh, to put that in so um, we do the same process as before so we go to add new device, press the device log on. So the log on button for this one is at the top here. So we press that. Starts flashing an LED at the bottom there. Gives us the ID code. We accept it. And we add it on. And you'll see that come up address 8 on our uh, interface when it's ready. I also got the uh, manual call point working as well as you'll see on the screen there so that's at address 1. So uh, it says it's added now so let's uh, just wait for it to come up on the screen. They do take a little while as with all wireless stuff. It takes a while to do there we go so we've got the io unit so initially that's going to be in it's in normal at the moment when it comes back round from a couple of polling's time i should imagine it will be in fault because we've got the cover off the front of the interface so we'll just wait for that to come round should turn blue at some point um the other thing we'd like to do with it of course there it goes so it's gone blue so if we um, go to that unit um, and we look at that unit, we can obviously operate the um, relay on there. So you have the, uh, the relay switch over. Can't really see that happening. But what we could do, we've got an LED enable button here. So if we enable the LEDs, basically just keep flashing um, obviously it conserves a bit of current if you turn them off when you're not using them but if we switch that over now you can see the relay LED come on and we'll turn that off again and we'll turn the uh, LEDs off uh, if we put the top on just so that we um, get it out of fault condition put it down somewhere Okay, uh, the other thing you'll see on here, and obviously that will change back to normal in a second, hopefully. It takes a while to uh, to come through. Go back to the uh, normal polling. On here. What you'll see is um, in 
information on the I.O. unit. So if we go to device status and go to the I.O. There it is. It's telling me it's in fault. Let me just have a look. Fault status. It's saying it's in temper still, so obviously the temper spring isn't making much difference there. There we go, that's better. Okay, so if we go back to the IO unit and we look at the information on that, IO status, so you can see the IO status on the IO unit itself. So it will say input bits and output bits. Obviously if we put a 1K resistor across the input, um, it would give us an input condition analog value doesn't change and the output side obviously what we can do with that when we, just to test to make sure it's working when we send the output command to the unit it changes the output bit now as with all input output units the control panel is monitoring the input side and operating the output side so um, they're two separate things, they're not connected. So an input comes in, the control panel can act on that and then maybe send an output. Or if the output operates because it's closing a fire door, when the fire door is closed, maybe we could send a confirmation signal to say that that has happened. So that would be the type of thing we would do with that. So um, that's our uh, input output unit.